hi everyone welcome to this channel the merchant consultant and tutors your go-to channel for everything about construction estimation calculation software engineering and tips on how to go about your daily duties on site so today i'll be looking at a very sensitive topic which most site engineers find very very difficult to actually um uh, estimate or actually work with so it will be on how to calculate the quantities of formwork beams, plywood, and nails for a suspended slab. You agree with me if you know what is a suspended slab. From the image there, you see the slab there, you see the formworks, the plywood, the beams, the props carrying it and everything. So we are going to be estimating or we know how to calculate these quantities, right? Okay, so let's just get through some of these theories and we'll be able to understand what each of all these terminology stand for so the first thing is we are going to look at what a slab formwork is now from the definition i have here slab formwork is a temporary structure that supports wet concrete until it hardens it rings a bell it's just a formwork that supports the concrete because it's a temporary formwork not a permanent formwork so once the concrete hardens after 21 to 28 days the formwork is being removed and then the slab is there so it consists of vertical props horizontal beams that's primary and secondary and then plywood sheets forming the slab surface then the nails hold the plywood to the beams ensuring the formwork stability alignment and casting i get so this also links a bear it just shows, tells, tells you about the composition of this slab formwork you have the props you have the the beams going in two directions, the main and, main and um, secondary. And then we'll now look at the sheets, the plywood sheets, right? Okay, so we'll be looking at the installation process or installation steps of a suspended slab formwork. Just from the image that was shown before, you see how it is. So the first one is to set up your acro props. In some cases, they use bamboo. Just anything that is vertical that can support your slab. So acro props. Then the second one is to place the primary beams across the props. Right? Then the next is to place the secondary beams perpendicular to the primary beams. So this is just telling you have two layers of beams, wood, wooden beams. One in one direction, the other one is distributing it. Then lay the plywood sheets on the secondary beams right and then you have to nail because that is just going to fasten the plywood to the beams that have been placed just five steps simple your aqua props your beams going in two directions your plywood your nails holding it you are good to go so now just from the image as i showed you this is the image these are the beams in two directions right the main and the secondary right so the secondary phase before the main on top of it so the suspended slab form or company just as i said the key things you need are your aqua props your hitch beams or four by four two by six depending on the um, size of the person doing this and then the plywood sheets then you have the nails those are the things you need for your slab form works right so we are going to go straight now to estimating right so we want to estimate what is needed for this purpose okay first thing is to estimate the quantity of formworks h beams plywoods and nails needed to construct a 12 by 8 suspended floor so the solution the size of the slab is 12 meters by 8 meters right so there the four more components to be used just as we listed there are uh, the primary h beams just for what we're estimating now we're estimating for the h beams that are spaced at one meter we will look at the secondary h beams that will be spaced at click 400 millimeters then the third we'll be looking at the plywood that will be placed on the secondary bars on the secondary beams and plywoods are usually 
in sizes of um, 1.2 by 2.4 maybe a little bit it's slighter higher than 1.2 and 2.4 but just within that range then the props to support this space as one meter so the props and the primary beams have the same spacing i hope you are getting this so now we'll start with the primary beam calculation that's the bottom layer right so as i was saying we are going to calculate that for the primary beams so the first thing is the bottom layer and it is runs along the 12 meter length spaced as every one meter 1000 meters sorry 1000 millimeters that is one meters right so to understand this is okay let's just start with these steps the number of beam lines is this giving us width divided by spacing plus one so the width is eight meters the spacing is one meter plus one so it's giving us nine lines so the primary beams are the ones that are beneath just as we said primary beams are the ones that are beneath they're the ones carrying this the secondary right okay so the total length of lines now this length of line will now be number of lines multiplied by slab length i'm sure the slab length is 12 meters i don't know if this rings a bell and you understand um, this what i'm trying to explain so now you need to add 10 percent of overlap just as you've seen in the image the overlap the woods overlap so you need to consider that in in the calculation too so we have it as 108 meters by 1.1 that is 10 percent so we have the 119 so you have to recall that the standard h beam length is 3.9 meters so i want to know the number of primary beam that is needed so what we would have to do is to divide the length of one h beam by the total length that's required so you have 119 divided by 3.9 you have it as 31 pieces upon you 31 pieces i don't know if you get okay so if you don't get this let's look at the second one and see how we be able to understand this now the secondary beams calculation that is the top layer is that the one that the plywood is sitting on now those ones are spaced at 400 millimeters just as we have um, we have said right okay so they run along the 8 meter width spaced at every 400 millimeter across the 12 meters span okay so first thing we are going to do is to calculate the number of beams beam lines right height is running i want to know how many it is going to be length divided by spacing plus one so the length is 12,000 millimeters that's 12 meters divided by 400 millimeters plus one right so we're having 31 lines right so the 31 lines of this, this is what we'll be getting. That's the number of lines it will be. Then the next thing is to calculate the total length that is required. So if one line is um that if one the the number of lines is 31. So we want to know how many lines. Right? So it will be 31 multiplied by 8 since it's running along the short span that's eight meters so 31 times eight divided by two equals to 248 meters of course we need to add 10 percent to overlap <laughs> so it will be 248 multiplied by 1.10 so we have it as 273 meters yeah we also need to recall that the standard h beam length is 3.9 meters right so we need to know the number of each beam you will be buying or be we need to be supplied so it will be the total length of lines divided by the length of one each beam 
uh, it will be 270 divided by 3.9 so we're having approximately 70 pieces right okay so this image is just repeated so that we're able to see whatever we, what we are calculating so we'll not get confused along the line right so now the plywood sheet you need to estimate that too I know we said um, it is 1.2 by 2.4, right? So this is very, very easy to estimate. You need to go through the route of using the area of slab. Once we know the area of slab and we know the area of one plywood sheet, we'll be able to know how many plywood sheets is required. So the area of slab is length times width of slab that is 12 meters by 8 meters. So we're having 96 meters square meters of slab that is what the slab is the area of the slab so now and then we said each plywood sheet like the length times width of each plywood sheet and each plywood sheet is 2.4 by 1.2 so we are having each as 2.88 meters square right so the number of um, of, um, of plywood needed will now be the area of slab just divided by the area of one plywood sheet it's as easy as that so we're having um, 96 square meters divided by 2.88 square meters right so the sheet needed it be just as it has been um, displayed here it will be 96 divided by 2.88 meters and then we have approximately 33.3 right so we need to add five percent for which stage you know not all all parts is going to contain full plywood you may have some parts that are just a, a fraction of it so we need to cut and then so all those cutting will have wastage so we need to consider that and then those wastage is just five percent so five percent of 33.3 will give us the value there so the next thing is to estimate the nail are we going to buy one bag? I'm going to buy two bags. I'm going to buy three bags. Depends on depends on what you want, right? So so um, we are going to estimate. So for the nail estimation, so we within nail to fasten the plywood and the secondary beams. So now we'll be looking at each plywood sheet requires a probability 35 nails. Can be less, can be more. We're just estimating 35 nails, right? Because it gets to go along. It's going to be nailed on each of these uh, secondary beams. And we need to fasten it well. So if we're using 35, so for 35 sheets, based on what we estimated. So 35 sheets multiplied by 35 nails. You have 1,225 nails, right? But a standard 1 kg of 2.5 inches nail contains 300 nails, right? So we want to know how many, whether we are buying one bag or we are buying half bag or we are buying in kg. So 125, 1225 divided by 300, that's in, that's in 1 kg. We are having 4.1 kg. So we need to order 5 kg of nails, right? Hope this is explanatory enough. Okay, so we'll be looking at the rundown of what we have done from the beginning of our estimation to this last point, which is the estimation of nails. Uh, so we talked about <coughs> the total form work needed. And we mentioned things that we needed. We needed the beams, primary and secondary, running in two different directions, transition and transfer direction. We talk about the plywood and also talk about nails and how we estimated them. So, for the slab that we consider 12 meters by 8 meters, right? So, the primary beam, which was spaced as 1 1 meter, we required 31 pieces, right? Or the, the 31 pieces, or 31 pieces, or 31 numbers. Then for the second beams, we estimated 70 pieces. 
or 17 numbers as the case may be. So the next one is we want to know the total number of beams, of number of H beams. So we're adding 31 to 71. So we'll be having 101 numbers of H beams. So the beams that are running in both the longitudinal and the transverse direction to support the the weight of um, of concrete. So the next one is plywood estimate. So we estimated 35 sheets. And the last but not the least is the nail that we estimated to be 5 kilogram. Right? So with this information, I'm with this information, you should be able to estimate for any type of structure, any type of slab, right? From the hitch beams to the nails to the plywoods, you should have a rough estimate of whatever I want, whatever you want. And also remember to always add wastages and overlap because that will be the the problem, the problem which most people have because if the materials is not enough. I wish you the luck. I wish you the best of it. So thank you for watching this video to the end. The Merchant Costopreneur and Tutors is always available to guide you in your construction journey. As a young software engineer, as a young construction engineer, project manager, you just need to be up to your game. Right? So this channel is here. I have so many videos on this channel that we guide you on different aspects. I even did, the last one I did was on tiles. How to estimate tiles, sketching, and the rest. So, for more information about construction engineering, kindly subscribe to this channel, the Merchant Constructors, and to us like, comment, and share these videos with friends and colleagues who will need it. Thank you.